Okay, so here we have question four of the International M2 paper of June 2015. It's a work energy question, relatively standard. Um, just uh, it does tell us to use the work energy principle. I'm actually going to use the work energy principle in part B, but you do have the option of using F equals MA and the equations of motion, or the two of that equations from there if you want. Okay, so um, there's a few things here. I'm looking at the angle here. Um, those of you who know me know I'm not really particularly keen on calculators. So I'm going to play with this angle so that I know what the sine and cos of it are before I do anything else. Tangent phi, phi to is 5 over 12. Let's draw, draw the thing over here. Often when you're given these, not always, but uh, they form a right angle triangle. It's a 5, 12, 12, 15 triangle. Okay. Um, so 5, 12, 13 triangle, should I say. And if that angle there is theta, we can see that tangent theta is 5 over 12, because that's what they've given us. And we also know that sine theta, therefore opposite over adjacent, is 5 over 13. And cos theta is 12 over 13. You don't want to be seeing ugly work where you're finding, writing things like arc, you know, sine minus, t you know, one of tangent, uh, sorry, ta uh, sine of tangent minus one, five over 12, and this kind of thing. Um, it'll look much nicer. And actually, if you know what you're doing, be much more efficient and much more accurate if you actually work in this way. I haven't actually done any mechanics yet though. Um, now, what we've got here is a situation where, and it's fairly standard, we've got rough, it's a rough plane, and this is one where we're not talking about general resistances, we're, talk, we're, we're actually, we've got a coefficient of friction, so we're using F equals mu R because it's moving and, and all the rest of it. Right, so I'm going to work out the frictional first, first, because uh, that's kind of going to be key. Now, if I work out the frictional force from here, let's just draw. Obviously, this is up there. We've got a reaction force there. We've got the uh, weight of the particle, and as far as I can see, the only other force is the friction going downwards. Nothing else. Uh, we've got the angle alpha here, and the weight of this particle, we're told, is 6.5 g. And we've got the friction equals mu r. Let's call it f for now. So we can say, if we resolve it perpendicular to the slope, the forces have to be balanced here. So we have r equals 6.5 g cos theta. And so you can see where I'm going with this because cos theta is 12 over 13. So I'm not, I haven't even, I'm going to have to reach for the calculator at some point, but I'm not going to do it just as a matter of course, just because it's there. So 6.5 g cos theta is 12 over 13. Now you can see that the 6.5 and the 13 because that, that's the 6.5 is 13 over 2. That's going to cancel quite nicely, actually. Brings great joy when things actually cancel down nicely like that. So R equals 6G. We're told the coefficient of friction as well, um, which is a third. So because we're using F equals mu R, we've got F is equal to one third times by uh, the 6g which is 2g it's always worth even though we it's easy to see that worth uh, r is 2g f is 2g when r is 6g it's always worth embedding the thing into a formula here because it just it makes the person who's reading your work, it makes it clear what formula you're using without actually quoting f equals mu r. I mean, I suppose ideally we could write f equals mu r in quotation marks here or something like that. But actually writing it like this, even though it's not difficult to work out a third of 6g, just 
just actually tells the person who's looking at your work this is what i'm doing i'm using this formula so the person will give you the benefit of the doubt if for some reason you've made a mistake done something silly for example put use the sign of the angle or got 12 out of 30 the actual ratio 12 out of 13 wrong or whatever you you may pick up the method it's just generally good practice uh, to write to in the first line when you're actually using a formula first of all to put the to put put them in as you write them into the formula without doing any little kind of mental cancelling down in your head and then do the kind of slick cancelling or nice little tricks after that don't do it before you've done anything else so make it clear in your formula what the numbers you put in i think that's a general good rule of thumb to go on right okay so uh the way we've been doing these questions is this little kind of i find a very incredibly useful rubric for the work energy principle which is the change in potential energy could be positive or negative is equal to the change in potential energy plus the change in potential energy is the work done by external force often just one force but it could be forces it could be more in this case it's just one force and the, the force is this frictional force and that's going to be taking energy away from the system so we're going to have a minus sign on this side because it's, it's not like a cyclist adding energy the, to the the system delta k or delta p it's going to take away from that total mechanical energy so um if we use this but we have to be careful because it you know when we're talking about delta we need to be making sure that it's initial take away final or is it the other way around? It's actually the other way around. So I did say we had to be careful to change because if it increases, final take away initial on both of them. If you get that wrong, then it'll all go wrong. So change in is going to be final take away with initial. Now, when this thing reaches the top, because we're talking about something that's going up a, a plane the kinetic energy is going to be zero because it will have stopped it started off with uh, a kinetic energy of um of this so that's our changing kinetic energy let me rub this off now i think we've got the idea of that now okay um it started off with the kinetic energy now the potential energy has been increased and we need the height now we can see this height here is d sine theta the height it's got before it's actually reached that maximum height there d sine theta so the change in potential energy will be plus d which is what we're being asked for sine theta Again, I'm writing sine theta, even though we know what sine theta is. Let's just write sine theta for now. 6.5, which is the mass times g. And that's take away zero. And that's equal to the work done by this external force. Now, the external force is the friction. Okay, so um, that will, and the friction is 2g. So that equals to minus 2GD. And minus because it's taken energy away from the system. Now if we work these uh, quantities out now, um, I've got this amount here will be equal to, that's um, 117, minus 117 obviously. Um, now I'm going to sub in the sine theta which is 5 over 13 and that's 13 over 2 6.5 is 13 over 2 g equals minus 2 g d okay well the 13 cancels nicely here so this is uh, working out quite nicely 
So we have, when we juggle about with this a bit, uh, if I keep this this side and take this over and keep, take the 117 over the other side, I'm going to have 5 over 2 GD plus 2 GD equals 117. Okay, that's going to give me 9 over 2 GD is equal to 117 so D is equal to 26 over G if you fiddle around with that a little bit which gives us 2.7 to three significant uh, to two significant figures as required okay so that's the first bit done okay i'm going to use the, the work energy uh principle so that's part a i'm going to use the work energy principle for part b as well although if you don't if you're not if you're not it's not for your favorite thing you can revert to suvat and f equals ma here it says find the speed it's now it's coming down the slope okay it's coming down the slope and we want the speed that it passes back at um, the distance x uh, in so coming to rest of y the particle slides down the plane find a speed it returns to here because obviously it's going to be less than six so we find again i'm going to put it into delta ke plus delta pe equals to work done by external force right now the delta ke well it was it had no kinetic energy at the end but uh at the beginning sorry but at the end it will still have some velocity so that's that take away zero plus the change in potential energy which is the d which i will keep the d as it uh in the thing we know what d is but we can i'll just put in the formula for now so that's d sine theta times 6.5 g Okay, that's the change in potential energy is equal to minus 2 GD. Okay, now I'm going to double uh, some of these answers here just to, to get rid of the fraction. So we'll get 13 V squared minus, um, 30, and let's take this to the other side. Let's take this over as well is equal to 13d sine theta minus 4gd okay so right okay so we've got that and we've doubled that for uh, minus 4gd okay so well that's not 13 it's 13 over 2 of course there okay because it's still the 6.5 there so that gives me 13 over 2 v squared is equal to gd just cancel in some things times by well, there's a g missing there because it's potential energy gd times by 13 sine theta minus 4 okay um, now that gives me 30 that equals to GD remember I know we actually know what D is but uh, we can uh, just talk about it in a moment so GD times by bracket 13 sine theta uh, sine theta is 13 over 5 uh, is 5 over 13 so it's 5 take away 4 okay so that gives me that if I multiply all this out I get 13 over 
2v squared is equal to g